Hey what's going on guys my name is Tanmay Sakpal and in this video tutorial we will study and understand the concept of refraction of light now this topic comes under class 12 physics under the broader subject of ray optics and optical instruments so with that being said let's get started have you ever wondered or observed that a clear pool or puddle of water always appears to be shallower than it actually is or a coin placed at the bottom of a tank full of water seems to be slightly raised or when a thick transparent glass slab is placed on a newspaper the letters seen through the glass slab seems to be slightly raised these my friends are example of refraction and there are many other examples so let's have a look at some of the images So here is an example wherein you can see a glass mug and a pencil is inserted and you can see that it is ending over here and the water is starting from here and you can see that the pencil starts little bit towards the right which looks little crooked over here so this is a visual illusion and this is caused by refraction of light let's see another example so here you can see that this is a glass cube and a laser light is passed through it it enters it over here and it slightly diverts inside upwards and while exiting it again changes its direction so this is again an example of refraction and And lastly you can see a funny picture wherein you can see a professor or a person holding a sign that is physics is fun you can see his neck is ending over here but if you see through the glass you can see that the person is over here which means that his sh head is totally shifted and it appears as as if his head is totally away from his body so these are certain visual examples or visual illusions of refraction so let us understand what is this refraction and why does it happen So in very basic terms refraction of light refers to the change in direction of a ray of light when it travels from one medium to another so this is a very basic definition of refraction of light so in the previous image slide you saw that the laser beam was starting from a one medium that is air and it entered into another medium that is the glass slab so since there was a change in the medium there was a slight shift in the direction of the ray and again when it exited the glass slab and entered the air again it again changed the direction so this is the definition of refraction so you must be wondering why exactly does this happen so that is question number 2 over here refraction takes place because of difference in speed in different media so this is the real reason why there is the shift of direction and refraction so the light travels at faster speed in rarer medium and at slower speed in denser medium now the nature of media is taken as relative for example air is rarer medium than water or glass so in the image where the laser first started off from the air which was traveling in the air it then entered the glass now glass compared to air is much more denser as a medium so the speed of the laser when traveling through air is higher compared to the speed of the laser traveling through the glass so this is what makes it change direction so let's see how it works diagrammatically okay so we have a diagram over here and we have three points so the three points specify how refraction works now let me just first give you an overview of the diagram so we have this blue rectangular box which essentially is a glass so this is a glass medium and then i have written air and this is a ray of light which is falling on this glass and it is meeting at this point this pink dotted line is a imaginary line which is perpendicular to the glass and it is known as a normal so this no this is a normal or we call it as a normal so let me just read out the first point when ray of light light enters from a rarer medium into a denser medium it bends towards the normal at the point of incidence so this is a ray of light which is incident on the glass so this is the point of incidence and it is making an angle of i with the normal so this is known as the angle of incidence that is the angle between the incident ray and normal is called angle of incidence and it is denoted by i now what they are saying is when a ray of light enters from a rarer medium so since the ray is starting from air it is in a rarer medium that is it is in a less dense a medium and it enters a medium which is denser than air so it enters glass at this point so what happens is it bends towards the normal so you can see this dotted line so this is how the ray of light should pass in a straight line but since the medium is changed it bends towards the normal and it makes a new angle which is known as the angle of refraction which is denoted by r So let's move on to point number 2. Now it says when ray of light enters into rarer medium from a denser medium it bends away from the normal. So now once inside the glass it again travels in a straight line you can see over here like this and once it exits the glass it moves away from the normal. So when it entered it moved close to the normal and this is again one more dotted pink line which is the normal again which is perpendicular to the glass slab and this time the ray you can see clearly that it is moving away from the normal and it creates again one angle which is equivalent to the angle of incidence which is represented 
by i dash and this is again r dash which is equal to angle of refraction now the third point says the ray emerging after the denser medium goes in the same direction and parallel to the incident ray so this ray that is exiting is parallel to the ray that entered so they will never meet but they have slightly changed direction actually the ray should be going like this but it is going this way in the, in the same direction and in parallel but it should be over here but since the medium changed it traversed from here so this is how it works diagrammatically now let's see what refractive index is so refractive index is the extent of change of direction of light in a given pair of media so let me just read it out again refractive index is the extent of change of direction of light in a given pair of media so the refractive index is relative value of speed of light in the given pair of media thus to calculate refractive index the speed of light in two media is taken so by this definition the refractive index of glass with respect to air is going to be a constant value and the refractive index of air with respect to glass is again going to be a constant value because since the medium does not change the extent to which the ray of light is going to divert or refract is always going to be same so this is what the definition says so now we have a formula to calculate this refractive index let's say ri and it is given by v1 upon v2 so this v1 is speed of light in medium 1 which in this case is air and v2 is speed of light in medium 2 which is glass so this refractive index is for medium 2 so this refractive index is for glass with respect to air similarly refractive index of medium 1 which is air would be v2 upon v1 and v2 would be speed of light in medium 2 that is glass and v1 is speed of light in medium 1 so these values are always going to be constant for certain pairs for example air and oil glass and water air and water so these combinations are always going to be constant for the refractive index for the particular pair also higher the value of refractive index higher the refraction and lower the value of refractive index lower the refraction now let's see one more concept of absolute refractive index so the definition of absolute refractive index is when one medium is taken as vacuum and the speed of light is taken in it the refractive index of the second medium with respect to vacuum is called absolute refractive index so in the speed of light in vacuum is the highest which is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second so whenever we calculate refractive index of any medium with respect to speed of light in vacuum at that time we are calculating the absolute refractive index of that medium so in that case ri of glass with respect to vacuum would be speed of light in vacuum upon speed of light in glass or refractive index of air with respect to vacuum would be speed speed of light in vacuum upon speed of light in air so that's how we get the absolute refractive index okay so these were the some basic concepts of refraction and how it works and some definitions like refractive index absolute refractive index and so on so now let's go back to the earlier example which was a real world example as in why do objects inserted in water appear closer than they actually are so here's a diagram which i've drawn so you can see this is a bucket of water you can see the water level is over here and i have inserted a pencil or pen in the water so when a human being is watching from this angle so this is the human eye that i've drawn so when when the human being is watching this pencil the light rays coming from the pencil are actually coming from this point so this pen is submerged inside water so the light rays are coming from this point however when they reach the surface of the water they are refracted away because water is denser than air so when the light travels from a denser medium to a lighter medium it refracts away from the normal and in this case this normal would be something like this over here so it refracts away and then it hits our eye but when it hits our eye what our eyes think and what our brain processes is that the object is somewhere around here you can see these dotted pink lines meet over here so our eyes and brains are fooled into thinking that the object is over here however the object is actually over here and this light this reflection of light from the object is actually getting refracted over here and our human brain eye is not able to process that information because the light is bent over here and we think that the object is over here which is little more shallow however the object is actually deeply immersed in the water so this is why we are tricked into thinking that the objects inserted in inside water are closer than they actually are so that's it for this video guys i hope you understood the concept of refraction of light and the next time you see an object inside water i'm sure you'll know that it is not as close as it appears if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and i'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial peace